We are live, brother. We are live. Yeah. Episode four. I'm here with my man, John Mooney. Introduce yourself, my friend. What's going on? Uh, what do John you do? John Mooney, trespass and photography. Uh, I'm a socially acceptable criminal. <laughs> we'll get into that for sure. <laughs> um, photographer. Yeah. Photographer. He Number brought his own toy with him. Yeah, yeah. It's 70 to 200. About to catch a portrait of this kid. He's yeah, not expecting yeah. it. Um, so, yeah, when did you first get into photography? How old were you? Uh, I took my first photo class like a year or two out of high school. Um, oh, so late in the game, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I was expecting you to say you got a camera when you were like eight as a kid or something. Well, I mean, my mom always shot. Okay. So, she, and she like always was in the garden taking pictures of her flowers as right. weird as like that no, is like it was always people just, are still doing that <laughs> yeah, yeah absolutely it was just well i mean that was really my first interaction with the camera yeah was taking like ruining my mom's role to film like trying to oh, yeah. take macro shots without a mac like yep you know trying to do more than i could with the camera i had i guess um but yeah that was like my first i was probably 10 11 and then uh i got into skating but uh, I never really had money like for a camera, so it was right. always just whoever had the camera that you could use. I was like, all right, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll film today. Right. Um, and it was just like a lot of skating and stuff like that. And I mean, from I think I got into skating around seven or eight, and then it was just like skate magazines, skate videos, and like everything was pictures. It's like, just yeah. all pictures, you know. Yeah. And like thinking back on it, it's like I was just looking at high speed photography and just like kind of just letting it soak into the the background right and it i mean i probably learned a lot of like framing and stuff without even knowing it for at sure. that point i was um i was gonna bring up the skateboarding influence because it's funny how much influence skateboarding culture has in my personal favorite photographers lives yeah such as like stefan vanesco and like you know 13th witness and all those yeah. dudes and evidence yeah. and like yeah yeah like all those dudes who are super dope at you know shooting California skateboarding classic like palm trees and skate pictures. That it's are crazy how talented evidence is. is all, yeah, dude, I know. Like, I throw him up there as one of my favorite photographers. Like he's not like yeah, right, the, the illest same fucking rappers like, too, you know. Um, and like the platform was like what I like grew up skating to, you know, right, like which is crazy. I was gonna ask, you know, like just I don't know, it's just crazy. A lot of my favorite photographers were were heavily skateboarding and or and or yeah. musical influence. You know, I started off doing concert photography or skate photography well, or it was funny because my first like introduction to music was also skateboarding it was like skate yeah. videos like that's where i i found music right because we i mean that's way before the internet and stuff like that mm -hmm. it was you know either the doors or like pink floyd with my mom and then right i get exhibit paparazzi on a skate video and i'm like what the hell is this you know right um my brother like showed me like appetite for destruction and um big l mm -hmm. lifestyles when i was like a little bit older but it was all whatever i learned whatever i picked up in skate videos right. watching the credits to see what it was and then going to um quincy records and tapes and quincy to get like any sort of hip-hop album i could get right yeah so i mean music and skateboarding is so and photography i feel like it all goes hand in hand with me and, and my favorite it, photographers and yeah. stuff as well so shooting pictures before everybody had an instagram before instagram was a thing remember that yeah, yeah i do um i think i like i really started to pursue it right around the same time though i think so everybody I, did i might i might get lost in the shuffle there mm -hmm. um well it just like before it was like how do i it was almost like okay i take these pictures but if i'm not getting published like and I'm just sharing them on Facebook. Yeah. But like Instagram was like, well, here's a Facebook for that. You know yeah. what I mean? Or MySpace, exactly, yeah. yeah. But, you know. I was shooting with like a, just a point and shoot that my mom gave me like one Christmas. And it was all shots of my boys skating. Because when I got my, fir my first like real DSLR, I thought I'd shoot skating. That right. would be my thing. Like I'd shoot skate shots and stuff like that all the time. And that would that's all I'd really shoot. And when I had my first point and shoot, I was living at this house with four of my buddies and two couples, and we had a skate park in the basement. So, so all, all my, and like crazy graph, like it was just like a, it was like, um, it was my college basically. Like I just partied the entire time, worked like dead yeah. end jobs, paid rent. But um, it was all skate shots from the basement, like long exposure, like 
blurry type stuff and that's like all up on my my myspace and stuff back in the day and then like instagram kind of took off and around the same time i dropped some money like on a on a camera finally i finally had a job a girl that like had me level there you go that's good i mean so right around when did Instagram start? 2008-ish, 9 ish something like that? I remember when it was just iPhone. Yeah, and it was, uh, I mean, yeah, it I remember. Was specifically iPhone. Platform. I didn't quite, yeah. I mean, I got it because I thought it was so cool just I, it, because it, it broke language barriers immediately. You know what I mean? side thing, I've had a Facebook since you could only have a Facebook with a university ID, a university email. That's crazy. When Facebook started, yeah, you, had, college, you yeah. had to have a college email to get it and i had a umass because i took like two semesters of like liberal arts bullshit at umass and i had a, a umass um email so i could sign up for facebook like the early days right that's wild old school shit for real um yeah so i mean you're, you're getting into photography instagram takes off like did you see it right away or did it take you a while to really get on the instagram wave um I was kind of right into it. Um, I didn't really know what I was doing, like, at all. I got my first camera, and then I went on my first, like, exploring trip. I went out with a couple buddies. Which was your start there, yeah. You got your first camera. Where was the first trip? Because I know you're big into to I do a lot. Of, I do a lot of missions. I try and uh, put a lot in a weekend, so, so to speak. Um, so your first trip was like, was it a Massachusetts trip? Was it a float? Like, was it a trip trip or what? Was it was it? a trip trip. We went to uh, a place in Connecticut that's pretty blown up now. They're like in the process of tearing it down. But um, me and my buddy Shawnee, I had just gotten a camera probably like two months prior to it. And I was right. like taking pictures of skating and stuff like that. And he was like, oh, I found this abandoned asylum down in Connecticut. You want to go check it out this weekend? And I, we had used to go to this place in Hanson all the time when I was younger to go like, smoke weed and just like hang out and you know yeah scare the shit out of each other and um i was like yeah sure so we went there and we saw this like huge like incredible theater and then like two weeks later it was demolished yeah. they, they did you get pictures it. of it oh yeah, yeah. I, have, yeah. I have like probably some of like the last photos of that place that's crazy and um just like running around that place i remember the first time i had to like hide from security and stuff like that for like taking pictures it was yeah, such like a story. strange strange thing because like i don't like you dip from cops for like keg bodies and shit like yeah. that like that's just normal occurrence but like having to like hide in an abandoned building while the cops are like walking around it trying to figure out how you came in and you came in from a tunnel from a building you know a quarter mile away mm -hmm. and like going through like knee deep water to get to this one pot where you know there's like a section mm -hmm. and he was like real early to that shit are they even about that life though? They're not going to go through that to catch you, are you? If you like hide in there and wait it out, you you can wait it out. Yeah. Usually, typically, you can wait it out. It, it all depends on the um, if it's security or like an actual cop. Right. If someone saw you go into like a lot of time, I've waited in basements for hours. Yeah. I had to hide in a bush for four hours from a canine unit. It's crazy. That was that was probably. I don't fuck with the dogs, man. That's. I don't either. I don't either. That was just like bad luck. That was, that's that's a, that's a later story. Yeah. So um, like you start off, you're taking a trip to Connecticut around New England. Where else are you going? New England. Um, we hit pretty much. You're every, all. You're just looking for abandoned shit at this point. Is at that this what, point, it was. How did you get and, into and it that? wasn't even. Was, it, where did it go from skateboarding to urban exploration? Where did that? My boy just kind of turned me onto it, and then after that, it was kind of like I just got obsessed with like just kind of finding new places. And it was also something that, like, not at that point, not a lot of people. Would, I mean, there was don't, don't get me wrong. There was like a sub genre of people that were doing it, but it's it wasn't what it is now. Right. Like it's huge now, but at the time it was like not a lot of people doing it. Right. And I just started talking to more and more of them, and <coughs> like you start like gaining like making friendships out of it. Right. So you're. You go from skateboarding, your boy Shawnee takes you to that place in Connecticut, and that's when you kind of started. It was kind of all about that after that. I think like two weekends later, we were in Long Island doing this building that was like 13 stories. Um, this place, KP, and it's another building where you go in, like this building seven, which was just like holding for um, patients. And you go in the basement, and you go through like a mile of tunnels, okay. like just asbestos-covered tunnels. Mm -hmm. 
And um, luckily, the people we were with knew like the way because there's signs that says like go this way, but it's like people fucking with people. Right, like yeah. you know, it's like you don't know the deal, so we're gonna write the wrong thing. Like, mm-hmm. um, but they knew the way, so you go into this building through the elevator shaft at the bottom, and yep. the elevators rotted floors um like floorboards are right above you on like the third floor and you have to go up through the basement elevated door as this thing's been sitting since like the 70s up right. there so that, that was like one of like because the first place we went in connecticut was kind of like smooth sailing mm-hmm. except for the cop walking around the building looking for us yeah, like, like, oh, like whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah but that was like hiking through tunnels for like a long period coming up through some like real sketchy stuff seeing a homeless guy down the hall and like having to just kind of like turn our back and walk the other way um and then after that it was kind of just on it was long island new jersey i got to see this place graystone um before they tore it down it was massive it's called the kirkbride building Mm -hmm. there was a bunch of buildings on the east coast they were all at saint and santa asylum so psychiatric hospitals all built the exact same Mm -hmm. and this one was incredible and they tore it down about four or five years ago but I got to see it like a year before they tore it down it was like one of the most beautiful buildings I've ever been in that's what's up it's a place with that um the classroom oh okay yeah, yeah, yeah. flying the flying the uh, paper airplane dope yeah that's that place my buddy Travis that I met through this type of he shoots for, for Sony yeah and uh, I met him just through exploring and stuff like that he set it up like probably ten years ago now at this point it's crazy so in New York, you know, where was your first big, big trip outside of, like, the Northeast? Um, definitely Chernobyl. Chernobyl was, like... So you went right to fucking... Right to Chernobyl. Yeah, that's crazy. That was kind of, like... It was just, like, a once in... Walk me through that. Yeah, how did that even happen? Who was idea? Why would it um, seem like a good idea? Um, I'd always kind of wanted to, like, to see it. I mean, I guess I'm, I don't, like, get scared easy. I mean, um, yeah. it was just... Me and my buddy, Tori, had always kind of said, like, we'd like to go there. I just had my son. He was probably two months old at the Mm -hmm. time. And my boy hits me up, and he's like, "Um, I'm going to Chernobyl in three months. I want you to come. I'm like, dude, I just had a kid. Like, there's Mm -hmm. no way I'm going to be able to pull it off. He was like, I got half your plane fare saved up. He's like, I've been working extras. He was stationed in Italy. a good friend. Yeah, he's a really solid dude. Um... He was stationed in Italy. Two and uh, two of his buddies came with him and met us in Kiev. Me and my boy Shawnee. I told my boy Shawnee, I was like, "Yo, like we have an opportunity to go to Chernobyl. You want to come?" He um, he was with it. Like mm-hmm. he's he's a traveler. Um, so how many people went total? Five. Yeah, five total. Um, we left and met them. Was your plan to explore shit that hadn't been seen, or was your exp- like what was your plan? You do a tour. Do like okay. for that, you have to do a tour because it's still a military zone. Um, the Ukraine has it on lockdown, so you get eight hours in the zone. You spend about two hours going through military checkpoints and stuff like that, checking your passport, making sure you are who you are, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. And then you get about six hours, roughly, like walking through like. You have to do a private tour because the public tours won't take you in buildings. Right. Yeah. And we contacted the tour guide beforehand. Like, we're not going to come all this way to, like, just shoot exteriors. Like, we want to get inside. Right. So, um, they, he was like, yeah, we'll take care of it. And um, so, you get dropped off in, like, the center of town with all the apartment buildings and stuff like that. And they walk you through, like, the nightclub area. And mm-hmm. then you get to this area that's the Ferris wheel and the... Um, bumper cars and there's another little ride there that was set up for, like the May Day fair that never happened because the reactor melted down like three days before it was supposed yeah. to happen so the only time they used it was when they were evacuating all the people to keep the kids busy hmm. but it's made out of metal and it was just absorbing all the radiation from the so all the kids got all fucked up yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone got off yeah up but it's, that. yeah that's crazy and then from there they take you like a um, you walk through what like feels like a jungle Mm-hmm. And then you get to these um, benches, and you realize you just walked through a soccer or a football field, or what was a football field 20 years ago, and now right. it's like a complete, like, trees like this thick, mm-hmm. growing. It used to be, like, nice and just, you know, you could yeah. play soccer on it. And then you go to, like, the schools and shit. The schools were crazy. It was all the gas masks from, they were, they were handing them out to the kids as they were getting taken out of school. Crazy. 
gas masks don't do shit for radiation. Right, right. So there was absolutely no escaping the tour and sneaking off on your own time. No, no, no. no. You're like documented yeah. in there. Like you yeah. go through radiation scans on your way out. Yeah. You have to like makeshift. I'm sure it doesn't do anything. The thing probably wasn't even turned on. Right, it's just, right. it's just for the look of it. It's like, yeah, you're going to Chernobyl. They right. tried to, they tried to, you know, uh, dinner. Mm-hmm. With like crops they had grown there, I was like, I'm good. I'm gonna wait till I can hit a McDonald's in Kiev. I was like, I'm good. That was um. So you stayed? Where'd you stay? We had a. How long were you there at first? It was like three days. Oh okay. It was 36 hours. Of, I was almost in the air longer than I was on the ground. That's crazy. Um, worth it still? Yeah. Uh, all, oh, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't trade it for anything. We got like two nights in the city, and then you had like one full day and. In Chernobyl, and like I, I, I didn't go there. When I do that type of stuff, I, I don't go to a party or anything like that. I go mm-hmm. to shoot. Like I just, yeah. I just do work. And uh, the city was cool. Like the architecture was incredible. Right, that's what's up. So you get home from there. That must have been a, like insane. That's your first big trip. Yeah, is... I like banged out all my edits on the way home. I, I brought, know. I brought my, I, I brought my computer. Yeah, I knew I was gonna have at least sixteen hours, twenty hours in an airport. Like. So mm-hmm. I just I just backed up everything and just started the edits like right as soon as I could. That's crazy. So after Chernobyl, like at what point did you were you already going by trespassing at this time? When did that start? I think it was right I was just like JM photography and mm-hmm. it, that had like really irked me for like a long time. Yeah. Like I would, like I'm sure like when you thought of like Rose Glenn it was like all right like now I have something like yes you know? see, with me it was almost like it was already something before I named a company after it like it was already like a yeah. thing to people it I, already meant something to people so yeah. that was an easy thing to do but yeah definitely I remember like it's such a stupid like slim shady sitting on the toilet thinking of that like it was I was sitting well, it's a dope in, name and I, it's not just a name now it, it's more it's like a br- so that's become, why I'm wondering at what point. I was sitting in traffic on my way after home. Chernobyl. After Chernobyl, okay. Because all because I, I remember because all my um, Chernobyl shots have the watermark of JM watermark, mm-hmm. and um, I was sitting in traffic on my way home from my pest control job. Yeah. To my um, my house in Cava, and I was just playing with words in my head, just trying to think of a, a name for for what I was doing, and it just kind of hit me like a ton of bricks. And I like instantly went on everything, like in okay. traffic, like yeah. Facebook, Instagram, Flickr, right. you know, Twitter, anything. I just locked it down and it was open everywhere. Except for it, Gmail wouldn't let me take trespassing at gmail.com. Interesting. You ever email the dude and try to see what's up with him? I've never tried that. You I should try to get I it. I should. I should try to get it. Um,. So yeah, so you start the whole. The, it was at first it just your alias, or was there plans initially for it to be a bigger thing? I didn't really like plan on it, like really taking off kind of as much as it has. Mm-hmm. Which, I mean, it, it's awesome that it has. I didn't think as my, many people would be into like photography of abandoned places. I guess I short sighted. I always do that. Yeah, I underestimate um, too. But yeah, it was just me. It was, it just finally gave me kind of an aim, like I. And I kind of had this thing, like, would I just post abandoned stuff under that name, or could I just keep doing me? Because I was, the photography that I put out there is always, you know, it's abandoned stuff, because that's mostly what I do, but it, you know, it'll be a picture of my kid every once in a while, like, mm-hmm. or it'll be, like, a landscape, like, can I put that under? A product. You know, whatever, a product, yeah, 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 exactly. Or a show, like. Well, the, th- the tough part about that is, of course, you can put it, I mean, like is is Instagram your portfolio or is it this brand that's like you know is yeah, it a personal exactly. thing like is people you know are people gonna hire Trespassion to shoot a kid's birthday party or are yeah, they hiring John Tony, you know what yeah. I mean and with Instagram and social media there's certainly niche followings whereas you know for example say I have two thousand followers five hundred are hairdressers, five hundred are rappers, yeah. and a thousand just are for my friends. friends yeah. So when I post a picture of me, it gets the most likes. When I post rap stuff, so none of them yeah. do well yeah. in regards to the numbers. And, and, and that's because there's no niche there. Whereas yeah. if you're just looking for rap stuff, like in your hip hop page, like that's the place to go. Yeah. So it's tough to decide what you want to go where and, and how you want to represent what and is Rose Glenn a brand or is it John Avini trying to get booked places, you know? Yeah. It's, so. it's a fine line to try and to try and walk and right. it's also I'm still trying to figure that out 
but it, it's been working kind of in all aspects because luckily like i think the fact that i'm just kind of out there as me but trespassion it, it works i'm kind of the same way I yeah feel like. exactly like people see they they know my personality like and it just kind of is what it is it's so strange that like to find that thing that because it's always been kind of like a defiant thing that i've been into right and this is the one that people have like latched onto and been like, right. yeah, this is, this is, this when is you get right. defiant, I said it earlier in another podcast, when you get defiant or rebellious, but the art's creative and people can respect it, they have to like, they look past. Yeah, they, uh, they yeah. do. They have to. And yeah. I said like that started once again, I said this on another podcast already and I'll say it again, only four episodes in, but I started doing this because when we were in school and we disagreed with things we could make in video production class, we could make videos mocking how strict they were about things that we didn't think were a big deal. Yeah. And while delivering a good project, you know what I mean? We yeah. were kind of being rebellious in spirit and it made and me it, feel like yeah. I got my point across, but they felt it because they had to, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. Same thing, and I literally have said that twice already in four episodes because it just came back. Yeah, I've been talking exactly. to one filmmaker and one photographer, so I guess that's why it, yep. it's like mine. But um, as far as travel too, where where else did you go? Chernobyl. Uh, where was the next big trip? Um, Pennsylvania. I did a uh, a good weekend in. Pen- I did two or three good weekends in Pennsylvania. Um, and like the Poconos, like there was a band at honeymoon resorts, and oh, sick, and like. Um, I found out later one of them, the, there was a guy that killed a couple Philadelphia police, police officers and he like hid in this abandoned like brothel. It it wasn't even like a brothel. It was like a swinger spot. People would spend hundreds of dollars to go there and just like share wives and, you know, go wild. And it was, um, it was crazy. It had its own airport. It was massive, but that's where he hid out for like seven weeks. And I didn't know we went like a year later. Um, hot shade beds and stuff like that me and D got chased out by one of the caretakers kid forgot his bag and <laughs> like the only time I got in trouble my my buddy who I won't even say not D we didn't, me and D made it out we were good um, he left his bag and we got separated and the cops two kids got caught or three kids got caught on the grounds and they were like two kids just went inside so then the cops take out one of those extendable ladders and come in a window that we climbed mm-hmm. up to. And my buddy left his bag in a room, so we got separated. I got out, and then I'm texting. I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm out, just hide, blah, blah, blah. And then the cops come out and, like, walk right over to me holding his phone. Oh, jeez. He's like, are you the one that was over there with him? I'm like, uh, allegedly. <laughs> Grabs me. We get arrested in Troy, New York. Oh, that sucks. Three hours away. That place was dope, too. How many times have you been arrested? Doing tr- uh, trespassing. Trespassing, I got... Or shooting related. Uh, two. Okay, only two? Not so bad. Yeah, I just finished up one in Taunton, in the town I just bought a house in. Nice. Good so my deal. first... Uh, good, good first impression. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was... And then, like... So, like, a week later, after I got arrested and had to, like, get out and deal with court and stuff like that, um, this kid falls off his bike down the street from my house, mm-hmm. and Sam stops and, like, is helping the kid, and she called me, and she's like... She made it sound like the kid got hit by a car. Yeah. So I run a mile down the road, and I'm, like, dead when I get there. And I'm, like, helping getting, like, bandages and stuff like that. A cop shows up. It's the cop that arrested me. Oh. As I'm, like, helping this, like, helpless Innocent kid. kid yeah, yeah, yeah. And he looks at me, and we have, like, this moment where he's just, like... And I'm, like, yeah. I'm not such a bad guy. Yeah, it was, it was such, like, a karmic, like, retribution, but it still doesn't matter. I look like a piece of shit in that town. Right. Whatever, it's not that big a deal. I mean, trust but there's worse things to yeah. worry about in time. Yeah, they were trying to catch me with, like, some serious crime, and I was talking to the DA, and I'm like, I was there taking pictures. And she was like, do you have a business card? I'm like, yeah. And I hand it to her, and it says, go trespassing on it. Yeah, not a good look. Yeah. And she's like, I had a, it's the VW picture, and she's like, I had a VW. She's like, all right, we're going to drop the breaking and entering. I'm going to drop the malicious damage. We're going to drop the trespass, and then you're just going to do 20 hours community service. There you go. That's fair enough. It's like, fuck yeah. So, 
New York, Pennsylvania, you get arrested in New York. I know you recently went to Oregon, right, in the last couple of years? Yeah. Why? It's funny because my buddy just moved out to Dude. Oregon. And he posted a picture just, like, in one of his spots where yeah. he goes and smokes weed. And I was like, I've seen this place before. And you I were? tagged you in it. And I remember you going. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're going, yeah, I went here. And you posted a picture on his thing. And I yeah. was like, that's crazy. Like, this waterfall Dude, in the woods. Like, it's insane. He's, he hangs out and smokes weed at yeah. And, like, you went across country and checked out. It's just pretty funny. I could do another month. He's been trying to get me to come out there. You have to go out there. Yeah. If you have a spot out there, go out there on a heartbeat. Um, we just did a week, like, out of backpacks and mm-hmm. out of the van. I think we had a hotel one night, and then we met my buddy who lives out there, like, pressing oil, and just, he worked as, like, doing control burns of, mm-hmm. like, forests, so they keep walking around with a kerosene, like, thing, and just set sections of forest on fire. Yeah, that was his job. That was his job. That's crazy. All summer, and they, then they'd put him out, and then uh, all winter he'd, he'd run a ski lift, and he just made some of the best oil. That's wild. His whole house was covered in maps of different control burns he worked on, like huge fucking maps. It's crazy. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Huh? We crashed it <laughs> on like day five, and I just needed a shower so bad. So what did you guys shoot out there? Just um, We did like the stuff? Goonies, Goonies stuff, like mm-hmm. Astoria. Um, we did Mount Rainier. We did 7,000 feet of Mount Rainier. Watched the sunset, like, into the clouds. I got that dope shot of D, like, through the sunset. Mm-hmm. Um, Vance Creek Bridge, which is a 350... I'm ah, probably fucking this up. I think it's, like, 350 feet tall, abandoned logging bridge that, like, I set up my hammock and slept across. That's great. Right at the base. Mello did it a week beforehand. I yeah. tried to get him to come on our trip. He's like, I'm going to do it alone. I'm like, all right, whatever. But you used to be able to do it and just like park and then like half a mile you'd be on the bridge, but they trenched out mm-hmm. everything. So you have to walk three miles of logging roads on private property. Right. And so we did it at night. They wouldn't sell us a shotgun at Walmart because mm-hmm. D had like, cause they won't recognize his Massachusetts ID and it's like straight like bear country. Yeah. Oh, that's what I was scared of at the time. And then we got to my boy DeToro's house. He's like, Bear, you don't have to worry about Bear. You need to worry about wolves. He's like, wolves would have eaten you guys in a second. So we hiked the the three miles at night with like full packs to camp and my camera gear, mm-hmm. which is like another 30 pounds. Right. Um, slept there, woke up to like a crazy, crazy sunrise. And then you go out into the center of it and you're at the top of the Prudential Center. 350 feet straight yeah. down, like trees. No, none of the shots work to like show the size because the trees are like 150 feet tall, right? And it just doesn't give you a perspective. A good scale, like, yeah, yeah. you'd have to shoot it from like the valley. But like waking up and just going out there and just lighting a legal joint. Yeah, so crazy. It was yeah. just like, and that was like day one. Right. We landed in Seattle. We hit a head shop, and then it was like straight there. And then we did um, HOH Rainforest, which is like the only rainforest in North America. Mm-hmm. And that's where I got that like path, pathway in like that big mossy tree um, shot. Like it was overwhelming. Like I couldn't even figure out what to shoot. Like everything was just so interesting. Right. I was, yeah, it was funny because when I was talking to Jonas, he was saying he didn't start filmmaking until he came to America just because everything was so different visually. You yeah. Know, he was like, him. oh, wow, like the electric lines are above ground like that. yeah it's weird you know fire hydrants we don't have those you different know? yeah so he was like and like you said it just kind of like whoa everything's visually appealing like what do i even look at yeah um so around what time did you and whoever else partner up with dress passion really start selling prints and making that movement it's, dude it's been like a year just like a year yeah huh? just like a year i've had the dot com for like a good good while like bring it on d like because we've always worked well together mm-hmm. i've known d 20 years now um solid dude like we all have our vices his vices speed like he just drives fast that's his yeah. thing um that's funny though i've been in the car with him one time yeah and yeah you, you'll yeah, never you. forget it <laughs> you'll never forget it i've lost girlfriends over that kid driving that's funny. um yeah yeah just just drive it just drive it like that like and dude <laughs> that kid drives like a maniac but um he's just so driven i couldn't couldn't really do what i'm able to do with the company without him right you know it's it's just as much his as it is mine uh he's an incredible photographer in his own right and we 
we shoot the same kind of content, but we have different styles about it. Right. Like, Definitely do. Um, and I it like works. this stuff too. Yeah. 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 And it works because um, sometimes like the stories sound so crazy. Like it sounds like we're making them up mm -hmm. and having him like had been there and been like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I remember them. This happened. It like, it makes them a lot more believable. Right. Cause like walking three miles out to like an abandoned Island across like a, the, a bridge that they're about to demolish in the snow to shoot like an abandoned hospital and then coming back and having him have blisters right. his entire heel. Like these type of stories that like don't, I guess happen to normal people, but like, that's just part of like what we do. Right. So when you first got into, um, shooting like and exploring and stuff like that, going to that first place with Shawnee or whatever, was it so much taking pictures of, shit that people hadn't seen often or was it the exploring part itself like did they both drive you or i think it was a little bit of both because i would find things things that interest me and then like i'd take pictures of them and then i'd realize that they'd interest other people mm -hmm. and it's stuff that n the normal people like would you be taking hikes out to the like if you weren't taking pictures like if you weren't a photographer would you still be as interested in checking out some of these places at all or, yeah yeah because yeah, i've always kind of been like an out there type of th okay that's out what there type asking, of person yeah. like skating around like i i just skate around for hours and hours and i was just listening to music like mm -hmm. i could definitely see myself like ex like taking pictures gave, just gave me a reason to be there right you know like um and a reason to look for more of them mm -hmm. to like see different ones um now it's just kind of like a sickness i just like right. see yeah, them everywhere see everything looks abandoned when you want it to be right, <laughs> right. <laughs> you right. know like you see some spots that like you you think are worth rolling up to and then like the next day you go by and see a car there you're like oh shit but to take that off the google maps right right i've watched places for like a year and a half to wait to see if like anything's been going on mm -hmm. and then been like all right i guess now now's a better time than never like houses and like, yeah. stuff like that houses are the sketchiest thing in my opinion people do houses like it's not no thing but like you can roll into a shotgun real quick yeah for sure with cameras and shit too yeah you don't know what the fuck you're doing no nah, exactly i'm an art student like, yeah yeah like that yeah you can only pull yeah. the, you can only pull that so i'm too old to be right. saying i'm an art student i was shooting a video um in hyde park and rex's old manager um was with us and a cop rolled up and uh he wasn't giving us a hard time. He was just like, oh, I'm just like, look on my list of things to do. It says clear out these benches, you know. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Guys, you guys are cool. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. And uh, dude goes, uh, we're just doing, you know, a school project. Cop looks at him and goes, how, <laughs> how old are you? And then they look at each other for a little bit. And he goes, Randolph High, 97 or something. And they knew, they went to high school. They, oh, no I was way. like, yo. And then um, like they dap up and yeah. just start laughing. I'm like, yo you're fucking 37 or something or however old he was classic. at the time like you're not in school yeah but what are the chances they knew he right too. that's like, wild um, it was funny so yeah back to um selling prints though so yeah. you were you were setting up shop at a number of different places the summer well, the last, summer the summer or, was kind of like it was all it was like full force we did uh the greenway in between um Aztec hooked you up with that, right? Yeah. I saw him. I did a wedding yeah. at the hotel across the street, and I saw That's him, and he goes, yo, Mooney's out there selling prints. Yep. Let's go off. I wasn't working. Yeah, I yeah, out yeah. There. That's my man. Um, yeah, good dude. I always buy, bump into him everywhere. Man. Everywhere. That dude is everywhere, doing everything. Um, yeah, we did the Greenway between Faneuil Hall and Aquarium pretty much every Saturday yep. and Sunday. We we went off of the Red Sox schedule. So anytime the Red Sox were, in, were home, like doing doubleheaders and stuff like that, that yeah. we did both Saturday and Sunday. Um, we did really well and it was just all prints that we printed at D's house, mm -hmm. printed up some extras, ordered bags, like tent and stuff like that. Like the overhead, like wasn't that, that much, but I mean, I probably handed out 10,000 business cards this summer, Dope. you know, and then we did Salem on the craziest day they've ever had. And it was <laughs> insane. Like right on Halloween, like the weekend, like the week of Halloween. And it was like the busiest they had like over a hundred thousand people there that's wild it was insane um we didn't do that well like selling there but like i met a lot of people right. like no i show people like that i wouldn't normally meet 
Mm-hmm. It was cool. Like, there's nothing better than handing out business cards. I'd, like, you can pay for a sponsored post all you want. Like, that works. It has its place. But, like, watching the analytics on the website after a good weekend and on the Greenway, I feel, yeah, man. it feels face fucking face. good. There's nothing like that. It feels good. Um, Yeah, dude, face to face. That's the way to go. People and aren't going to forget you like that. Yeah, you know? exactly. And it's the stories. People want to hear the stories. And, like, you can only portray that so much on social media. Like, right telling a story right. about like how, how we do things like this yeah exactly so, yeah speaking this. of which what is does the craziest in story the craziest story involve like a police chase or an arrest or a near-death experience which one would be the craziest craziest story um probably <sighs> the most nerve-wracking one was probably the um the canines i was in a spot that is um Massachusetts uh, yeah <laughs> maybe yeah um but it's like federal charges yeah of trespassing so it's a dangerous place get caught. To, yeah. um we were just there taking pictures and for whatever reason they did like training with a couple canine units and mm-hmm. we ended up having to dip and like hide in these bushes for four hours while I was like face to face with these two canine units running like practice and they didn't they never came they had no scent to go off of they were just looking for like drugs or whatever hidden in the in the courtyard but in the courtyard we were hiding in like, right so we hid for four hours and it was and I'm wearing full hoodie and you're not and moving jeans. straight up no, just one no, spot one four spot hours. like I was Nighttime, daytime, daytime. Oh, it's well, so the, much worse. The way I like, the way I had done the spot before, <laughs> I did it once before and had no problems. Um, and then the second time I did it, uh, it didn't work out as well. Um, you get in there like four a.m., like an hour before the sunrise. You hang out. You find your shot. You wait for the sunrise. You get your shot. You get a couple more shots. You get the fuck out of there before people are on their way to work. Mm-hmm. Um, we end up getting caught up doing too many things in my opinion I wanted to be out it didn't work out that way um, and as we were on our way out they were coming in so it was a mad dash to find a place to hide and uh, it ended up being a bush that like probably 40 feet from where they were doing practice and I'm in a hoodie and jeans because I get poison ivy when I look at it <laughs> So I'm covered like, and it's like 95 degrees. It was like the one hot day this year. Oh, it was this year? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and so you're pushing your limits recently. Yeah. You know, yeah, I won't down by any means, huh? No, no, no. I, I think you always kind of have to try and outdo yourself. Never get comfortable. Like you have to, I don't know. It doesn't always have to be that crazy, but you should always try and like one up yourself. I think that's always like always trying better off the last. That's a bad way to look at it. Um, I mean, it doesn't always have to be in that aspect. Uh, that's like, what I was gonna say. I was gonna say this. I mean, there's, there's other ways to one up yourself too. Yeah. Not, I'm. Just, I mean, I'm all for what you do. Don't get me wrong. No, no, no. But um, yeah. I mean, I was like, yeah, you're not slow. You know, normally no. you're like, you're like oh, I got all these horror stories. Like, yeah, maybe it's time. You know, no. take it a little. I, you know. I think honestly, I, I think I thrive under the pressure. Good. I think having to look over my shoulder while I'm shooting kind of makes me, you know, see another shot over my shoulder. Right. Like the thing I like you said get caught up. You, there's so much awesome shit that like. Well, that's why when we were shooting Stiz's video in Westboro, I was just like, dude, we got permits. Like, just come in here. You yeah. Get all day. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come get whatever. Yeah. Because it's like, if everyone wasn't so, let's do this quickly and get out of here. Let's do this. Let's do that. We're gonna do this. Like there would have been so much epic oh, yeah. B-roll in that place. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. like I would have walked around all day getting footage. Oh yeah. Because you know? then you just start to see more things and as you see more things your mind starts working different right, ways. Right, right. Um, but that's why I was like yeah dude you gotta like I was seeing if you were free you just kind of And then like, I think after that I did Pennsylvania and then I did the the boat trip out to the island which yeah. I want to do again. So explain I mean explain that a little bit that's giving away too much uh, yeah that's local um, they blew up the bridge out to the island where there's a rehab and an abandoned um, I believe it's an influenza hospital with a 18 slab morgue and an autopsy table 
and yeah it's pretty <laughs> that's pretty crazy but the the rehab and stuff still is like power <laughs> really yeah and like run it like you could live out there that's so wild. so you take a ferry out there no nah, i had my boy that has a boat because i grew up too local for that shit like yeah. I, I know people with boats so like i just yeah. had a boy drop me off close i brought my hammock i crashed in the rehab in the hammock woke up early the next morning shot the theater um and we moved over to the, the hospital that's like oh there's old um wheelchairs from like the 20s with like the wooden wooden leg spot yeah i think i saw some pictures yeah of those, those ones you can tell are like really really old um there's but there's a bunch of those there's like stacks of them over there yeah um and we shot the morgue and stuff like that hung out for a little while uh, ate some food and then we just waited for our ride back he just met us at three at the same spot he dropped us off and then we were out spent the night out there um there's like two or three people that patrol it i guess mm -hmm. um i've never seen anyone there's a lighthouse that i want to shoot that no one really gets to shoot unless you want uh, to take one of like those helicopter tours right but nobody gets to shoot it from the ground so i want to yeah. I think in the snow it'll be best. So I'm, I'm I might have to make a trip out there this winter. There you go. Um, you ever almost like fall through a fucking floor or something like that? Uh, at, on that same island, I yeah. fell I fell through a set of stairs. That same trip where D we D borrowed somebody or like got boots from somebody mm -hmm. and decided it was a good idea to wear them. And you have to walk a mile to this mile long bridge and then yeah. a mile into the island. So it was like a six mile hike. We're coming back, and he, his ankles just trashed. So in the morgue, where that, um, where the autopsy table is, yeah. you had to go down these set of stairs because it was locked in the back. <coughs> and the stairs were all rotted out, so you had to go like up the braces along the side and like mm -hmm. hold on to this railing. The railing let go, and I fell back on D and like took out a piece of the ceiling. Oh man! All on top of us, and I ended up falling like straight back on D, but never through like a floor. But that was probably the word he got asbestos in his eye and shit. Oh, like, I felt brutal. bad. Brutal. Yeah, it was pretty pretty rough. In the first, like, year and a half, I wore, like, a mask and stuff. But now I just, like... Unless we're going across something and coming back. Yeah. It's when you kick it up, you gotta worry about it. Right. Well, dude, I was... When we were just doing the shit in West Bar, you could see people kicking it up yeah. left and right. Yeah, and that like, dust oh, is what you gotta worry about. Bad news. Yeah, so, like, that's the craziest close call as far as getting hurt or anything like that? You never yeah. been hurt too bad? No, no, no I've been lucky. Um, <laughs> last time we were in uh, NY, we tried to do this. We failed. It's like a thing now. I have to do it. I have to go back. Was I there for this? I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That, yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that one. one. Okay. Yeah, his, his ankle's fucked from that. Yeah, still? Yeah, he, like, broke something. Yeah, These I told you about the moment. What did I do when you guys went to go do that? I think that? you were just crashed. I might have been. You were just like crashed out. It was like very unbecoming of you. Yeah. It was like that whole like trip was kind of like, it was a good time, but it was kind of like, no, it wasn't like. It was no party. party. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't a, sure. it wasn't a party is what it wasn't. Um, That's exactly what it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it wasn't. Um, so yeah, go on. These dudes left the hotel at like, what, midnight, right? Nah, it was way later. You got to do that at 3 a.m. Cause it's when you when left at three a.m. Yeah, you, you. Oh yeah, you did leave mad late. We probably left. At All right, I don't feel that bad then. Nah, yeah, it was it was it was it was well into the night. Um, so we tried to do the spot and we got turned around and ran the wrong way down the tracks, and it's active, active tracks. So D rolled his ankle. We're hiding from um, trains going by, and we're like, "Fuck it, we're getting back to the platform." We come off the platform. And it's me and D covered in a hundred years of train dust. Well, I woke up when you guys got back Dude. to the fucking uh, to the. Hotel. We're trying to clean each other, clean ourselves up with hand sanitizer and stuff. It was in rough shape. Um, he he rolled his ankle and broke like a bone in the top of his foot and was like hobbling. And so we're pulling ourselves up onto the active platform after a train had just gone by, mm -hmm. and there's two guys walking towards us who had just come from whatever party they had just come from, covered in glitter and looking right. like they had just done their thing. Right. And we come out, I'm still wearing a mask because it's like that. Yeah. There. Um, covered in just dirt. Like looking the worst I've ever been. <laughs> <laughs> looking the worst very... Good look. Yeah. Looking very guilty. 
Yeah. And D hobbling behind me even worse. <laughs> and I just looked at the guy and I go like this. And he just nodded to me and we both walked up the set of stairs and went our separate ways. <laughs> It was the best, like, non-conversation I've ever had. That's awesome. He understood. I understood. Nothing was said. We went on our way. We called an Uber. And D got in there, like, bloody and just I was going to say, I remember blood, too. When you guys got back very, to the fucking very... hotel, I just remember, like, this is New York City. It's a small hotel room. I remember waking up when you guys came yeah, in and he fucking was, he was in covered in shape. dirt and... You didn't need, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, I think he slept on the floor, like, woke up fucking dirty and shit. Yeah, 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 I kind of washed up, but it was, like, there was no, no, no fighting. cleaning up, yeah. Yeah. Um, so there was that New York trip, we had fun, we shot MCA day, we had a yeah, good time. That was awesome. Um, I yeah. put, I put 60, 63,000 miles on my car in, like, a year. Wow. A little, little over a year. So I noticed you just posted something about um, doing some classes at some schools tomorrow. Yes, I have a, I'm teaching three classes. Probably while this goes up, you'll be at the school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll be teaching three classes at North Quincy High School. Um, How did that come about? Did you put yourself out there? Or did they call you or what? Um, friend of a friend um, is the teacher. Cool. There I and... Two of the classes I've, I had already taught last year. Okay. So they've they've had me as a guest speaker before in one of the classes I haven't met. But um, it's cool. It's different. It's tough. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I would say. Um, well, what especially with what about? I do. Cause it's yeah, like, I was going to say, what are you even talking about? Um, <laughs> like basics of photography or your experiences or what? Experiences yeah. is more what I go to. Because I could sit there and, you know, no I, one wants to, I, I saw an aperture that, into death. You know I mean? like, like, they unless can you're, YouTube that. Exactly. Like, they need... like, they're learning that in other ways. Like, I can just try and make them think of things differently, mm -hmm. I guess. And just, I don't know, less by the book. Because, like, I'm, I guess I'm not, like, classically trained. I've watched a bunch of YouTube and fucked up for yeah same like, i mean i didn't go to film i took a million bad there, you know? pictures so i could learn to take a thousand good ones like yeah. it's, it's it was true. just trial and error um so true people are either going to want to do it or they're not like um i can just try and make them so yeah you tell see them. how it's interesting in different ways right so you just kind of give them your story or my what? story i mean when it started it was all chernobyl it was mm -hmm. like uh i taught a um a class at bridgewater state and it was about like photography with a purchase uh, with a purpose and it was all my Chernobyl experience mm -hmm. that was the first class I ever taught and then I taught this will be my third time teaching at North Quincy um that's dope and I feel like I did another one in between there so um that's pretty fucking cool it is it's fun that transition yeah I mean it's some of the, like, some of the kids anytime are like they get you out of your element I think or like yeah. make something you're uncomfortable doing is yeah. is totally only gonna push you well I mean in Miami it was funny cause I was just gonna bring that up alright and go on no Miami Miami uh, I just got back from uh, Art Basel down in Wynwood Art District it was fucking crazy um it was probably like my best like paid gig yes please um yeah, continue on with it. Yeah. Um, so, I feel where I was going with that. No, yeah, you Art Basel. Art Basel. Art Basel. Art Basel. Basel. Yeah, I was doing, I was, people were calling me on it all week. I thought it was the same thing. Um, I just read what I read and pronounce it with a shitty Boston English <laughs> accent. <laughs> Pardon my lack of, um, I don't know, whatever, my ignorance, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, that trip was crazy. So you just got back. You got booked by who to do what? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that's where I was going. My buddy, Mike, who was in town for a little while, he's a kind of just like a traveling artist. He lives in Chicago, but he was in Detroit at the time. He drove from Detroit to Chicago to pick up his buddy, Brandon, and then from Chicago to Louisville to pick up his other buddy, Chris. Yep. And then they drove to Miami to meet me. Oh, they drove all the way there. All the way there. With, like, a whole trunk full of paint, spray paint, mm -hmm. and, like, T-shirts and stickers and um, just all merch. Right. So I meet them. They get there, like, they were running, like, five hours behind. So I'm just hanging out at, like, the main area, and I meet this dude, Mastro, who Brand hooked me up with. Mm-hmm. 
like I accidentally bumped into him. His he was on the phone like making moves, like I can do this mural for you, blah blah blah, like doing his thing. And his girl was about to light a joint. I'm like, I, I've been on a plane all day, y'all. I'll give you ten bucks to smoke that joint with me. And she was like, No, absolutely. So we smoked the joint. I gave her a card, and then I leave, and I come back, and he's like, Yo, I'm supposed to meet up with you for B, and like, he was introducing me to like the curator of the place, and so like cool. just I handed out like a bunch of business cards right mm -hmm. there. I was just like, boom, I'm here to shoot, I'm here to shoot. I had already gotten that reflection shot. Mm -hmm. I saw So that. I was just like, I got this in 10 minutes, like, what's up? Mm -hmm. uh, if I could have stayed another night, I could have shot like RZA and stuff like that with press passes. Would have been so dope. But I came back for my son's birthday because that's way more important. Right on. Absolutely. RZA. RZA can wait. RZA can wait. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, it was just crazy. I just shot some of the, the most, most amazing. Most graffiti artists? Yep. That's it, cool. And That's just met up. a bunch of them, hand out business cards, and uh, I built with Merrick a lot. Me and Merrick oh. were chilling. But his boy, Chris from Lou um, Louisville, was like, I was meeting people and just interacting with people, and he was just so blown away with like social skills, I guess. Mm -hmm. He was like, because I was meeting people, and he thought I knew him for years. And it right. was like, that was no, that was like my first introduction <laughs> right, to him. I'm making right, a good right, first impression. Right. Like, he couldn't couldn't understand, like, being personable like right. out in public and I think that's like such a lost skill yeah the internet is uh, definitely it, depriving that for sure yeah it's it's sad like cause he wasn't wasn't a bad kid but it yeah, was like after I was like oh how'd you meet all these people how'd you get this gig I'm like I went to like rap shows and I like yeah. handed out business cards yeah. and I told people hey this is what I do like let me know if you need a hand people you know just need to be a little bit more outgoing yeah I don't be yeah. Everyone's not gonna bite you, you know. Yeah, everything's not a dick dick to that, a dick size content. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, so March, do you have more March coming out, or you do? I know with paint peel and tea was a pretty big success. Yeah, that went really that. well. The Kickstarter went well. Yeah, that went really um, well. Do you uh, have another? I know you released another shirt recently, right? Yep, yeah, we got the green line shot X Max spot. Um, that one's not gonna have the white outline. It looked too much like a postcard. Yeah, it needs uh. It's so is that something adjusted. you're stepping into? Is is some merchandising? I mean, um, yeah, it's not. It's never really the goal. Yeah, I'd kind of like to do another all over print because honestly, the all over print I think is more my thing. I want to do gas masks. Super cool the way it looks. Yeah, I think the gas masks will work good with that. Mm -hmm. uh, the paint peeling thing was like I made one for myself because I thought mm -hmm. it looked cool. Mm -hmm. Like I just downloaded an app and made one for myself, and then like. So many people were like, I want one, I want one. So I was like, all right, put up, stupid not to, right? Put up a shut up, like, and then I ended up selling a, a bunch of them. And then like, I don't know, I got the idea of the paint cans. That was super cool. So super like, cool. and then like all of them came with like a the, yeah, they're packaged with uh, a couple ahead, stickers. Yeah. Um, they all had like a Polaroid, like a uh, yeah. a Fuji like Polaroid shot that mm -hmm. I had taken. Some were like abandoned shots. Some were like double exposures and stuff like that. But right. it's like. But one off all, thing you know but they're all packaged in a dope little paint can yeah it was in like a uh, so I it's not it's a like you order a shirt and you're used to getting like a bag in the a bag mail, you know it's cool that uh yeah, you, paint paint like you can't you order can put other things in it you put you yeah. know like people are using it for like change i still change, change like, you put pens in it but yeah. I mean, it's a bucket you know yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a little bucket you use they, whatever, they but, weren't cheap like you can't order no just, they're like, definitely not 52 of them like for my shirts it's like you gotta order a hundred and 40 of them it's like yeah. fuck when we have these paint cans. right yeah, definitely but they worked like it was, it was a cool idea and like no real cool I, I think packaging's huge yeah but like I think you it needed see, it. It, it, the value goes up immediately when you yeah. put it in something like that and I noticed they had the um you know your own tags and everything too which is yeah, cool yeah we did so. that all by hand like it was late nights at these like and mm -hmm. it's D like he ordered all that stuff you know yeah. I wouldn't I talk a good game but like yeah I'm, I spend more time behind the fucking camera right, than right. anything else. Like he's you need a partner to absolutely. do something like that, and, and he's not that he's not behind the camera, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Like more. when it comes to that stuff, like I, we sell stuff on the website. I, I screenshot it and send it to him, and it's just mm -hmm. like boom, handled. Right. Like, what about um, like how like you started off shooting skateboard and got into urban exploration? Where did rap stuff come about? Obviously, your friends are rappers and shit, but shooting rap shows start that way or what Cause kinda I know. it was just like me bringing the camera to, to where two you're shows at. Yeah. too you know right. like it was combining just, everything you like once it became the thing it was the thing like right. you know like um, cause it was mutually beneficial from you know yeah and, like, exactly you I, share a picture of a tree that tree ain't gonna share that photo but yeah, you know like 100% oh, dude from and the rap like, show is gonna you know 
it's cool like I've gotten into a lot of shows like just to shoot you know like and it's like shows I want to go to like so it's like oh yeah even if I'm not like getting paid like you're I, saving money uh, yeah I'm saving money doing like, what I would be and, doing anyway with a better angle you know yeah like, exactly typically like I get some of the best seats in the house like I went I, <laughs> this was most recently um, I got fired from my job for coming in early don't do that trying to steal over time um is that what they claimed or is that what you were legitimately doing yeah i had asked for time off of my uh my dad and then uh my kids like mm -hmm. and it was early in me being there so i see it like and then i came in early to try and like you know make things work but like they just like nah we're not having it like they were just mad strict about it i read it wrong whatever it was kind of fucked up yep. but whatever um so i got like escorted out of that place and like i'm the most like passive yeah, dude. yeah like yeah. they thought i was it was i've been escorted out of, it was mad and i'm not a violent dude nah. either and i've been escorted out of like, like places that like there's a bunch of children present yeah here. i'm so like I'm thanking fucking, people for yeah. working like it was nice to work with you like on my way out like they're like <laughs> right behind me um so anyway i got escorted like out of there at like 10 a.m and then Told you did come in early. Seven seven Couple. p.m. that night. I I'm in my dressing room in the Wang Theater across from Bone Tugs and Harmony. Yeah, see, uh, life changed. The tables turn. Brother. Rock him and Raekwon. I saw all the flicks. The Super dope, man. I was jealous. I don't know what I was doing that night. It was like well, I didn't want to go as a fan because of the show. Like, and it's like theater yeah. seating. I didn't yeah, want to like. I could sit definitely and, you know, see. But like, if someone was like, "Hey, you want to come shoot this?" I would have been on it too. And that's what it was. Yeah. No. Exactly. And that's what's up. Good for you, brother. That's fucking sick. But um, it was such like a kind of like I felt like it was like a stepping stone moment. Shooting your favorite rappers. Well, it's going from like working a nine to five and like Just losing that. On top it, of the like room, yeah. yeah, like I like was like a loser earlier in the day and like like just a rock star later in the night like just feeling on top of the world like I got some of the best images I've like shot in a while mm -hmm. like from just whose so lens? down whose lens were you using? I went with my buddy Crispo's thank you you cost me a bunch of money but yeah, I, I appreciate say, it he went and bought one yeah yeah I love that thing um starting to get the hang of it 200's a whole different world I'm used to like wide angle and I miss my 50. I missed my 50 so much in Miami. Real. You don't have another 50 at all? I don't. I'll, I'll loan another one too, but uh, I got to get a 1.4 for now. Yeah. I, I use Damien's um, 85.18 for like the nighttime stuff. That thing's image uh, stabilization is pretty good though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, that's what I'm starting to learn. Cause I'm so used to like 200, you gotta be at 200, like, and I can't be shooting at 280. Right. Did I pass that? I don't even. Know. I don't know. We're getting like crazy technical right there. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're just having. Yeah. This yeah. We like we're like right here for some people right now. It's we're just talking camera about this shit. lens, in case you're wondering if you're watching. Um, yeah, man. Well, that's dope. So, I guess I won't hold my breath for more merch. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, up, it'll the, come I, I want to do the gas mask shirt and um, I can do 249 of those Method Man shirts before he'll be mad at me Just who told you that that's what I I read yeah, I bet he's to be mad at you oh well alright yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> before be I can sue you um, I honestly just I want one for myself make one uh, yeah you know? But so make two, send him one. Be like, he's not gonna wear a shirt of himself, but who knows? You know, what I mean? nah, like, hey, dope. I'm gonna wear this. I, was, I tried to like it or not. Yeah, send him a little handwritten note with one of the. Shirts. I tried to get the pictures to him, but I, I don't know. Right. Well, he's not gonna look at a tweet if he gets some mail at his house. He's gonna open that shit. That's a very good point. But um, what's what should people look out for as far as trespass in 2018? Are uh, you still working with Damien Heavy? Are you? Um, yeah, me and D. So that's what it is. Do you guys have plans for this year that you can disclose? Um. I have, I have to go back to, I have to go back to New York. Okay. That's a thing. I failed. And, uh, it's to do the thing that, yeah. Oh, okay. It, that's a thing. Um, I got to do that. I'd love, oh, it's tough because I, after Chernobyl, my bag got stolen mm -hmm. out of my work truck. Yeah. And, um, by this crackhead, he ran into an abandoned building, like right, ironically enough. Yep. and um, just like hunkered down in this 
in this room and luckily some lady told me and like I got the cops there and they got my bag back but he ripped up my passport Oh, so the only thing I lost oh, to, to only to thing I lost was my Ukraine stamp that I'll probably never get again but unless oh, I go well. back oh well um, you have the pictures I do like but um, I don't have a passport right now but I there's some spots in Canada that I know about that I want to go to um, so a little bit more traveling more images yeah just I'm just gonna what about um? what about um? products that aren't necessarily close what about a uh, beach towel? Or uh, I'm just thinking of fucking no, no, no. photo stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, somebody was saying shower curtains. Anything. Shower right? curtains, I mean, yeah. the yeah, options yeah. are limitless. Yeah, 100%. Um, I guess we can close with any advice for anyone who's trying to get into your lane. You know, uh, specifically urban exploration and photography and, you know, maybe advice to be careful, advice to, you know, anything like that. Keep kids out of trouble, at least, and safe. <sighs> out of trouble it's a tough one well you know that's trouble a risk to the territory right? but, but um, at least you know what you can you know scout some places at least you know what I mean do your yeah, homework I mean, keep do your, something yeah do your homework do your homework like and um, don't ask for too many handouts there's a lot of people who are just like asking for spots and like mm-hmm. it's like I don't know people work for that like but for sure you know my my locations I well hold. it's like asking a beat maker what he's sampling it's like asking you know you know everybody like just inside information. It's just like, to try to discredit the human being as much as they can. You yeah. know what I mean? Oh, how much of this is that song? How much of this is, someone worked for you? How much of this did someone... You know what I mean? They just want to discredit and tear down anything they get, the more information they have. Yeah. Like, But uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we can close on anything you have to say to anybody kind of coming up in that lane. Because like you said, it's huge now, especially with Instagram and yeah, people. Yeah, you know? um, and YouTube. Like, YouTube yeah. exploring is crazy. It it's is. great stuff. Um Motherfuckers are crazy. Yeah, playing on the edge of buildings and shit. Doing I just seen it. I just seen another kid. Not even taking. They're just twenty-six year old kid fell off a building and uh, where was it? Doesn't matter where. Holy shit! Get your shit together, kids. Yeah. Enough of that. I always thought parkour and all that shit was fucking stupid. Like, get a skateboard, get a bike, get something with some wheels. It's cool. Like, 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 <laughs> I, like I'm just saying, that's my perspective. Sh- like, Ninja Warrior shit. Like, don't I could risk your fucking life over something that someone for, like, is, like, 10 seconds. Like, eh, okay, that's kind of cool. No, absolutely like, my not. my palms yeah, sweat yeah, yeah, a little yeah. bit, and I'm closing nah, it because I'm I don't good care, with that. You know? Like, rooftops were never really my thing. Like, the, the Vance Creek was, I like... I was never scared the, of heights until I got older and kind of valued my life more. As a kid, I was I like, never, let's fucking... Let's jump on a roller coaster. Let's, I could still go on a roller coaster. Yeah, I'm good with that. But, like, hang on. I... I wasn't. I didn't care as a kid, but you know, when you get to be an adult, I was like, "Holy True. shit!" I kind of value, I value this a little bit more. Yeah, I'm. Yeah, exactly. You fucking value your life. Um, do your research and just like do it because you enjoy it. Because like you can get like yeah, don't do it for the shit grand. gets old real quick. Like right. when you start like following it for the wrong reasons, you know. Mm-hmm. Like you just got to do it because you like genuinely enjoy like creating. And, right. Like, I like creating, but I don't like long walks with bugs and shit like that. So that like type of thing or dirty water, or, like, yeah, yeah, like I ain't, that ain't necessarily for me. For I leave you, that yeah, for yeah. people for you. But like, if you could, I could transport there and start taking some pictures. I would be like, these spots are fucking dope. Exactly. But like, I'm, I'm not, not the I, type of dude. You know what I mean? I'm just like, I guess like there's certain people. Like, I'll do some crazy shit for a shot. I want, but that's not necessarily my. Yeah, thing. what I do isn't necessarily like. For you, but I see like, a lot of people fucking not people you know, out there like yeah. building like fucking vans and shit and living in it for like three months at a time, like yeah. just flying drones over shit. Like I'm like I'm like two days away from just buying a drone and just getting lazy. Yeah, I mean, there's so much shit you can do you with it. never get without a fucking yeah. helicopter. Yeah, it's dope. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just still having fun with it, like. It's a lot of fun. I'm like enjoying portraits right now because that's like a that different, well, with different the new thing. lens. Yeah, it's always kind of everything gets. Expanded. Yeah, I still got my wide angle, so I, like I'm getting lazy going into buildings. I'm just bringing the sixteen to thirty-five. Yeah, the fifty was fun. I got, I still got these eighty-five. That could, that could get detail shots, mm-hmm. texture. Um, yeah, I, I get lost in the lines of like abandoned buildings. Right. Like I try and line up and like even off. Like buildings that are like falling in, like it's, right. it's like such yeah, a mental. No, yeah. fuck, I'll spend twenty minutes trying to line up a shot that I know. Well, you can see in your work, can't the be, framing is all can't be lined up, but I'm still gonna struggle to do it. Right. I'll always try and find it. Like, I know exactly what you mean. You, I can see it, and all you. I'm a big fan of 
I've of line work. I've and, fallen in you know, love with like composition. Well, I could see that framing's everything in your work. It's it, you can it, tell that that's like it's like I've I've like trained myself to be an architecture photographer. Yeah, just from like what I what I do. Like usually it's abandoned, but like now I can do like real estate work. You know, right, because I've shot right. a million rooms. It's just not abandoned. Mm-hmm. You know, it's got like vases and shit. For sure, <laughs> it's different. For sure. It's a lot of fun though. Uh, it just shooting is fun. Like I could, right. I could shoot anything. Well, if people want to reach out to you, where do they find you? We'll close on that. Trustpassion dot com. Trustpassion on pretty much anything. I own it. It's mine. I I'll thought put of it. um all the links in the description yeah. for people to find you. Shout out to you. Of course. Doing your thing. I appreciate it. Of course. Good talk, my friend. Episode yeah. four is a wrap. Peace. Peace.